making plans for Nigel. This boy is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is where I would normally tell you about how we've got on for the previous month with our solar generation and energy consumption, but this time I thought I would do something different. I thought I'd talk to you about what's gonna happen in the next month. So it's the beginning of September, I'm gonna to attempt to predict our solar generation for the month of September in advance. I see a lot of tools that can do that. I've got solar forecasts on my Victron system, um, on the home assistant um, system that I use. So solar forecasts are software based and they're available for all sorts of systems, but I've never really found them that accurate. And I guess it's because of the obvious that they're using data that's based on geographical amounts of solar um, data throughout the year, the previous year, the previous 10 years. So they're looking at averages, they're looking at a mathematical calculation, and they're looking roughly in your area. They're not looking specifically at your area. Yes, you can input what solar panels you've got, what angles they are, where they're pointing, and that will all help in the calculation, but they can't take account of what trees you have, what bushes you have, what shade you get, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And obviously it's reliant upon your input data. So if you input the wrong angles, you'll get the wrong data. So, Actually using my own data that I've captured since 2019 is going to be more accurate than all of those systems because it's, it's real. It's what's actually happened here and all the shade and all the issues that happened throughout the year, those are all taken into account. So the data I have on the lows, the highs, the averages is a very good starting point for looking at uh, how much solar we're going to have because we can see what the maximum could be, what the lowest amount could be. And then we've got to work out, well, where's it going to be? Should it be high? Should it be low? Should it be in the middle? Should it be an average? So it's a bit of a guess, but an educated guess. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing now. So let's start off with the weather, because obviously the date is one thing, but what's going to happen with the weather is another. So far in 2025, it's been an extremely bright and extremely dry uh, year. So without all of that rain, we're going to have lots of solar generation because it's the rain, it's the dark gray cloud that gives you the worst solar generation. It's not the cold weather. The cold weather is actually often bright, white cloud, light gray clouds, more solar generation on those days. So the colder it is, the more heating energy you're gonna use, but the more solar generation you're likely to get. The damper it is with mild weather, that's when you're gonna use less heating energy in the autumn and winter, but you're gonna have less solar generation. So those dark, cloudy, continuously wet, damp days, those are the ones where you're gonna get zip, absolutely nothing. Now obviously, weather's weather and it could change and we could get an exceptional dry month or an exceptional wet month. We have no idea what's coming, apart from what the Met Office tells us, the weather forecast. Now, is it accurate? No, it's not, is it? But is it a good starting point? Let's go and have a look. Okay, as I'm recording this, it's the 4th of September, and the first section of this forecast covers the 8th to the 17th. And what it says there is uh, much of this period will be unsettled. So unsettled presumably means rain. This will mean showers or longer spells of rain will affect much of the UK. Okay, so there is going to be rain. There's thunderstorms in there as well. Uh, later in the period, there may be some longer spells of drier weather that develop, especially towards the south, with more in the way of sunshine due to high pressure. Temperatures will likely be close to average. Well, that sounds like a pretty much normal September, doesn't it? The second section covering the 19th of September to 3rd of October doesn't really tell me much other than it's going to be changeable. There's going to be some sunshine, there's going to be some rain and temperatures are likely to be close to or a little above average overall. So if I take a look at last September's solar data to see uh, what we actually generated and how that looks, these orange lines, the high spikes were clearly very bright, very sunny days. The ones that are more around 10 kilowatt hours um, so it looks like the 5th the 9th the 10th um, and then towards the end of the month quite a few so those look like the rainy days so it does look like last september was a mixed average bag as well so if i've determined it's going to be an average september i need to know which year i'm going to compare to which is the most average now if i look at just the 3.9 kilowatt solace array the uh, blue lines they're the tallest ones 
382 is one of the lowest. That's last year. 438 was one of the highest the year before. 387, 394 in the middle there. 2021, 2022. So probably high 380s, low 390s is going to be the average. So probably picking one of those three years, 2021, 2022, or 2024 to compare with. Now, I've got four different solar arrays, but I've only really got to estimate one of them, the main one, the 3.9 kilowatt array, because what I've got in previous years and previous months is percentages. So if you look at September 2024, uh, 382 kilowatt hours, the next one along, 146 kilowatt hours is 38.22% of that. And then the next one further along, 218, is 57.07% of 382. 147 kilowatt hours is 38.48%. So once I calculate the first one, I can use the percentages uh, that are common here. So 38% in 2024. And if I look up at 2023, it was 36.76%. And consistently is 57% for the other array between the two years. And I don't have the garden array going back beyond September 2024. So just the 38.48% is the only one I've got to go on. So I've only got to estimate the one, the one number, instead of 382 or 390, 391, something around those numbers, then I can apply those percentages and I'll get the rest. Going back to the previous September's chart, if I plug in 391 kilowatt hours for the 3.9 kilowatt solace array and then apply uh, 57% to the solar edge array i get 223 and if i apply 37.85 percent to the 2.5 kilowatt solace array i get 148 and the garden solar panels uh 2.4 kilowatts of garden solar panels 38 percent gives me 149 so using those numbers i'm estimating 911 kilowatt hours is what i'm going to get so an average ish september should look something roughly like that. That's my guess. So in summary, to come up with that estimate of 911 kilowatt hours for September, I'm not doing anything special really, am I? I'm just looking at a weather forecast to work out whether it's going to be dry, whether it's going to be colder, wetter, any indication to show which side of average it's going to be. And then it's a simple job of looking at this chart to see previous September data and guesstimate which of those numbers are going to be the right side of average for this coming September. So yeah, I've estimated 391. I think that's going to be roughly where the average is going to be compared to what else I've seen for that 3.9 kilowatt solace array. And then all the other arrays are calculated automatically using percentages that I've seen before on how each of the arrays equates to that main 3.9 kilowatt solace array. So estimate one and calculate the rest automatically. And that should be 911 kilowatt hours 391 being the starting point on that 3.9 kilowatt solace array we'll see when we at the end of september how close i was thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this slightly different perspective of uh, data and solar generation how much are we going to generate in the month of september the month ahead i think it will be wrong <laughs> i don't expect to be accurate i don't expect it to be perfect but it'll be very very interesting to see how close we do get it's also going to be interesting as to whether the weather changes and we get a really damp month a wet month and we need that water or whether it's going to be another dry month uh, in which case yeah we're still going to have water shortages throughout the year and it probably will prolong into next year these water shortages i mean can you believe the canals are all closed up at the moment that uh, canal boats are grounded the canals are too low to navigate i don't think i've recalled that uh, previously but then again you know i haven't actually been looking at those sort of things in the past so you know maybe they have occurred maybe they haven't anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video uh, enjoy the stats uh, hope you've got some great stats there for your own solar battery energy systems we're all going electric aren't we if you haven't yet it's only a matter of time before you do everyone's going electric take care see you again soon bye for now